We all deserve clean water. We all want to be able to go on our boats. We want to be able to fish. If we don't do something about the environmental health of the Indian River Lagoon soon, we're at a tipping point and we're not going to be able to rebound. When we can just do one small step like installing a buffered shoreline or restoring living shoreline habitats, we are going to improve the lagoon collectively together. Shoreline projects are beneficial, especially when we're installing living shorelines, because we are putting some things back to the way nature had them. Naturally, these areas have living plants along the edges. So when we displace those plants to put down our homes or other things, the best thing for us to do is to say, okay, now that I've built my home, let's mitigate the damage and replace it with something that is living. There's a lot of properties along the Indian River Lagoon that have very traditional lawn type. That means that they have turf grass leading right up to their seawall or hardened shoreline. And so every time it rains or their irrigation comes out, water is flowing over the land and carrying any of the nutrients or sediments with it and dropping it directly into the Indian River Lagoon. At first, this homeowner only had something green growing all the way to the end of their seawall. When you install a buffer zone, what you're doing is allowing native plants to capture those sediments, those pollutants, and nutrients before they ever make their way to the lagoon. Our mission is how do we help save and mitigate some of the damage in our lagoon and our other waterways? The data is pretty impressive. So what we're seeing is that before we install a buffer zone, we're seeing high nutrients, specifically in phosphate, nitrogen, and ammonia. Once we put the plants in place for our buffer zone, we will then see a dramatic decline in those nutrients. And so that is the whole intention of a buffered zone. We want to be able to identify areas along the lagoon that would benefit from a living shoreline and then be able to monitor them. Our teams of citizen scientists come out and they will assess how the living shoreline is doing. You want to find a spot where oysters will naturally recruit to. If this living shoreline is working the way that we hope it would, biodiversity would increase. Every time I come out to the living shoreline site, I'm always surprised. Yeah! <laughs> When we pulled up that stain net, we saw small puffers, we saw baby mohara, we saw a lot of life. The Indian River Lagoon is a vital nursery. Many of the larger species will come into the lagoon to lay their eggs, and the lagoon is essentially a cradle for them. If we remove that shoreline, then we're not providing those vital, tiny little organisms a place to seek refuge. We've really been able to see the progression of growth from those mangroves and those plantings, and it's just been such a lovely thing to see. And more importantly, it's been really lovely for our citizen scientists to see it and the impacts that living shorelines have. I really enjoy the hands-on learning aspect of this and actually getting out in the field like we did today. Missy taught us that this is not what the shoreline used to look like. Our whole community is built around the lagoon. It's a giant part of our natural landscape here. You know, I think it's our responsibility to protect it. We need to make sure it's healthy and I think it'll keep us healthy too.